Right, well, I know we'll be coming back to you uh, throughout the night. Uh, meanwhile, here with me at Sky Center throughout this pivotal e evening are Al Scardino, a Democrat, former press advisor uh, to President Clinton, uh, Dr. Pippa Mulgram, uh, who worked as an economic policy advisor to President George W. Bush, and the journalist and political analyst Beth Gardner. Welcome uh, indeed to you all. And uh, Pippa, it's fair to say, isn't it, if we think back uh, to those moments, uh, George Bush... Have to avoid tonight. I mean, Beth Gardner, do we have any idea why he performed so badly? I mean, he's done, he's done a lot you of know, these debates in his time, hasn't he? It's very hard to say. Obama does seem to have a certain pattern of, you know, very powerful performance and then gets to the point where it's sort of time to close the deal and somehow falls back. And I don't know, there, there's a, a, a sort of a yeah. school of thought that says he has, a, a you know, some kind of um, a predisposition to sort of get himself backed into a corner. Uh, we saw it, you know, four years ago in the primaries with Hillary Clinton, where he came so close two or three times to Finishing sort of sealing the nomination and then, and then sort of fell apart. So he certainly got his back against the wall now, if that's where he likes to be. I mean, it is you, definitely where he's put himself. Do Republicans really think... Beth, how, how do you think uh, Obama needs to... Uh come back tonight or what does he need to do? Well, you know, as Dominic was pointing out, it's a very tricky balance because he certainly needs to sort of show a little bit more fight, a little bit more life and come back against Romney. I mean, I think people were shocked two weeks ago that we didn't hear the word 47 percent. You know, what a vulnerability for Romney and what a shock for Obama not to take advantage of that. So absolutely tonight he needs to go on the offense, but as Dominic pointed out, this town hall forum, yeah. it's harder to do that because you don't want to look like I mean, the bully. Can, can you rationally, you prepare people for debate. What do you think is going to be decided? Well, you, you were talking earlier about yeah. Ohio and this dispute pre the debate between yeah. the, the two campaigns about who's winning. That is crucial because it is well nigh on impossible for Romney to win the election without Ohio. There's one or two little ways he could do it, but almost impossible to imagine a Republican winning the race without Ohio. Obama, before the debate, was up by something like eight points. I saw a poll today, he's up by four now, but there's obviously polls showing it much tighter. I think if Romney can show that he truly is neck and neck in Ohio, um, you know, that yeah. is going to be making Democrats very, very nervous. The answer to the uh, early voters in quite a lot of states. I mean, about yeah, more than voting, 10 percent have voted already. Yes, I think, and that's a big change from from previous elections. Um, I mean, I think one of the the biggest impacts of the previous debate was not only on the swing vote, but the way that it disheartened Democrats. Um, the enthusiasm gap enthusiasm gap moved very sharply in Mitt Romney's favor. Before the debate, the Republicans were the disheartened ones. Mm. The Democrats watching that performance really became sort of despondent and there was a lot of fear that it was going to depress their turnout. It's you disheartened? Good. No, it's very, mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'll tell you one. To know, I would give a little bit of the advantage to Obama. Uh, expectations are higher for Romney now than they were before and Obama certainly is going to come out punching. But I think the bigger question is can this second debate, can another debate move the polls okay. and change the dynamics the way the first one did? Yeah. I think if, if, if he overcome Democrats and journalists and uh, political analysts, uh, uh, Beth Gardner. I mean, Beth, they keep on saying no one knows what the questions are going to be. Yeah. Uh, is, it, is that really true? Well, I guess the way it works is that these undecided voters who've been sort of carefully pre-selected and screened write their questions down and Candy Crowley, the moderator from CNN, who's a political journalist, chooses them. So obviously that puts quite a lot of power in her hands and I would imagine that you're going to see her trying to find a range of topics. This is uh, the first debate that will be allowed to include foreign policy and as we were hearing earlier uh, the Benghazi attack is probably going to feature pretty large. And she also has follow-ups doesn't she which I mean, he has a certain amount of uh, truth on his side in, in practical terms but he just doesn't get the message across. Though, yeah, he certainly does. Um, I mean, to be honest, I think one of the things that happened in that first debate is that Obama was a little bit taken aback by the way that Mitt Romney presented himself. Uh, and you heard Obama saying that the next day and, and following on from that. But it is certainly true that we have seen for, you know, about two years now, Romney really tacking very hard to the right you know, rousing the base. He needed to do that in the primary campaign, but he continued well into the general election campaign, and you can certainly see it with his selection of uh, Paul Ryan as his running mate, who is really the darling of the, you know, fairly 
hard right in the party and suddenly perhaps you know feeling defeat coming on Romney liberated himself from from that set of positions moved to the center and Obama I think came in expecting to be able to poke holes at this you know as Romney called himself the severe conservative and instead found himself up against a, a moderate and to boot a, a sort of dynam dynamic energized one. But I, I what you're saying Beth, Beth it, it strikes me that one of the big differences between the debate in this country and the debate in uh, uh, the United States is that by and large uh, taxes on the better off are popular in this country because uh, most people don't pay them whereas even people who don't pay mm -hmm. uh, higher, higher rate tax in America see it as uh, something which might uh, stifle aspiration. Yeah, well, there's a very well-developed sort of anti-tax rhetoric and anti-tax anti philosophy, which has been, you know, very sort of intentionally developed by the Republicans over the last 30 years or so and pretty successfully um, promulgated. Um, there is a lot of popularity, I think, actually, for raising taxes on the rich, and you're seeing Obama and Biden and the Democrats repeat that plan, that idea, over and over again, and it does seem to sort of, you know, get people going, including uh, the moderates. One of the questions is, is that actually enough to close the deficit? And the answer is probably that you're going to need to raise taxes on the middle class as well, but no one really wants to say that because that's have, definitely have very not popular. Uh, views to raise? I think what's shocking is that Obama dropped that as an issue. I mean, as you say, w what an effective issue. How has he gotten away with that? He's published one, I think, one full year of tax returns and one summary, or maybe it's two full years now. His father published, uh, uh, released, I think, 12 years worth of returns. W why didn't we hear that from Obama in the first debate? Why didn't we hear the Romney 14 percent? He, he seems to have abdicated all of his best arguments. Yeah. Well, speaking of his best arguments, I didn't win. <laughs> the I, I, Beth think, I think anything other than a big, clear win by Obama tonight is essentially a win for Romney because Romney changed the dynamic of the whole campaign in the first debate with his win. And Obama needs to change it back because he's lost momentum. Pivot Morgan. 